week uh, of the program. So it is a pleasure today to have with us Leonardo De Lima. So Leonardo is going to talk, uh, tell us about probably the topic sector with compositing models at present and future health. Yeah. All right, first of all, thanks to the organizers for this excellent program and also for the opportunity to give my talk. Uh, so this is based on this paper we published in 2021 and another one that we are finishing with uh, Ricardo, uh, Eduardo Ponton, Al Jorge from CMS and two students, Carlos and uh, Leonidas. Right, so first of all, as you all know, I mean, composite Higgs models are still a well-motivated extension for the standard model. And it would be interested in probing uh, if the Higgs is a composite particle at some scale or not, right? And like NBSM model, we can do this by either precision measurements of the Higgs couplets or direct searches for resonance. And usually, when you search for resonance, you assume a simplified model or only some lightest state is present, right? And uh, if you drop this, as you see, we can have richer phenomenology, and sometimes it can change things. And uh, we will be focusing mostly on the Higgs and top sector, in particular on the HHTT process. Okay, so a brief review of the minimal composite Higgs model. Many of you are experts, but uh, in case there are any students, so in this model, the Higgs is a PMGB of uh, SO5 to SO4. So this minimal model, this leads exactly to a doublet, which identifies the Higgs. And uh, the potential is generated by the gauge interactions and also the Yukawas, which are not aligned with the unbroken SO4, right? And it leads to some small misalignment in the PMGB space, which leads to a small potential, right? A small, a small value for the Higgs. And uh, the fine tuning in this model, as you know, is due to the hierarchy between the scale f of the breaking of SO5 to SO4 and the scale of the Higgs value. Right. And in this case, there is a beautiful mechanism for generating the Fermion masses, which is partial compositeness. And uh, in this mechanism, the standard model particles can mix with resonance of the composite sector. So the gauge bosons mix with uh, row-like resonances, and the quarks mix with fermionic resonances. And these resonances by CCWZ fall into reducible representations of the unbroken and so forth. Depending on the representation right, of the fermion, we can have different signals, different couplings. Okay, and uh, this is the minimum model, but many extensions are possible. This is uh, very well explored, so you can have larger symmetries. You can have, uh, which is very popular now, neutral naturalness, where the resonance aren't colored. You can study UV completions, etc. right? But uh, we'll attain ourselves to the minimum case, right? And furthermore, only the smallest uh, SO5 representations, which preserve custodial symmetry, the 5 and the 14 representation. So the representation, the five is the fundamental, right? And then the so far, it breaks into a fourplet and a singlet. So the fourplet is really two electric doublets and the singlet or is a singlet, right? So there's a <coughs> top-like doublet with hypercharge one six, one over six, and an exotic doublet with hypercharge seven six. And uh, this is the Lagrangian, so you can see here the Mi the linear mixing of partial compositeness of the left-handed and right-handed top with the resonances. And uh, up to electric symmetry breaking effects, which are small, this is the spectrum, right? So we have uh, the lighter doublets are mostly unmixed, right? Because of the exotic hypercharge. So they have a mass which comes from the Lagrangian parameter M4. And uh, the standard model like states mix with the top, the left handed top and the right handed top. And this mixing is in these couplings, YR and YL. Okay. <clears throat> Meanwhile, the 14 is a larger representation, it's the symmetric, and uh, it has the same states as the other one, plus a nonet, right? And the nonet is really three electroweak uh, triplets with this hypercharge, right? So it's much more complicated. And uh, these are the mixings, right? 
And now you have a new mixing of the standard model with unknown net. <coughs> okay. So what is the parameter space of these models? We are going to simplify and take all the left and right and the mixes to be the same. It's not only a simplification, but uh, this also assures that the Higgs potential is soft. Right? So this is a necessary condition to cancel quadratic divergence in the potential. By the way, we, we don't worry much about the details of the, the Higgs potential. Right? Our focus here is more on the fermionic resonances. Okay, <clears throat> so these are the parameters. Uh, so the scale of the breaking and uh, the masses, Lagrangian masses and one and four, which are different from the breaking of SO5 to SO4. And in principle, a sign, uh, because of the way of absorbed phases, right, we put a sign on N1, and then the right, left and right mixes, and for the 14, the same thing, plus the mass M9, and now, because we have uh, less, more freedom with the phases, right, you can also change the sign of M4, it becomes physical. And so, ah, and of course, we, one of these parameters is fixed. We choose YR to be fixed, by giving the correct top mass. So we take the running mass to be around uh, 150 at the resonance scales. And so we do, we do two scans, one uh, more focused on what you can see at the high luminosity LHC, which we take the resonances up to 3 TeV, right? And the F scale up to 2 TeV. And this is just for perturbativity. And then we did also a scan that can go to much higher masses, much bigger mass range, uh, envisioning a future collider such as the FCC. Right. So what are the predictions of this model? Well, of course, the standard model companies are modified by composite means. So there are functions of this ratio, V squared over F squared, and also by mixing with the resonances. So we are interested in the, the Higgs top sector, so we want to look at the TTH and TTHH couplings. And these are the possible modifications of these couplings. So we have a modification of the triple Higgs coupling, modification of the top Yokawa, a new normalizable coupling, TTHH, uh, and also the coupling to gluons, well, Higgs to, to, to gluons and Higgs Higgs gluon gluon. Right? And so the standard model limited is kappa go to one and now the c's go to zero. So this uh, in the limit where, okay, first CMS measures the top Yukawa, the ratio of the top Yukawa to the standard model to be around one, of course, right? but with some uh, leeway, so about 0.3 is the uncertainty. And uh, if we integrate everything out, you get uh, these expressions for the Yukawa, right? So there's a suppression, both in the 5 and the 14, but there's something quite special that can happen in the 14 in certain regions of the parameter space. So this is a suppression, but in certain regions of the parameter space, the 14 step goes to a non-standard model limit, yeah? So if you go to the direction parameter space where M1 is the generative M4, uh, or if the 9 plate is much lighter than the 4 plate and the singlet, you go to a non-standard model limit where this guy goes to three instead of one. So this is, of course, a complete disaster, right? <laughs> you can't have this. But uh, what you can do is play with these masses, right? So that you have some interplay, something between these two. Okay? Then you can have as many masses. So, so yeah. Side, you just measure the composite mass of the Higgs. Yeah. So how come you just leave it? You are independent of two? Oh no, there are side corrections. I'm trying to know it because 3 is huge, but uh, there are many corrections in Psi. Psi is supposed to be the leading. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll explain what's happening. Yeah. So, this of course is unacceptable. Why does this happen, right? Uh, this happened because of the way you generate the top you cover, right? So, in the case where you have a singlet or a fourplet, well, the Higgs is in a fourplet, right? It's the PNG bit in a fourplet, the left hand quark is in a fourplet, and uh, the right hand quark is in a singlet of SO4. So you can contract these SO4 indices, and you only need one Higgs. This is fine, okay? But uh, if these two guys are heavy, and the, the mass of the top and the Yukawa come mainly for the fourplet, then you have a problem because this guy has two indices. 
And then, in order to contract all those indices of the symmetrical representation, we need the insertion of two extra heaps. And this means that uh, at the leading operator is linear for the foreign one. It is actually this cubic interaction for the, for the niblet. And then you see where the factor of three comes from. It comes from which of these doublets, six doublets, you pick the web from. There are three possibilities. Okay? So, of course, you can't have this, but you can play with those masses and get to a behavior that is, has a little enhancement, but is still within limits. Okay, so this is the parameter space. Okay, so uh, for the, the left for the 5 and on the right for the 14, for some choice of parameters. And here we are scanning over the Lagrangian masses M1 and M4, right? So in the case of the 5, you only have one physical sign, yeah, which is that we take to be the sign of M1. Uh, here is a region where you can't get the right top mass. And the black region is excluded by direct searches, uh, which at the time were about 1.3 TV. Later, I will show that it's now around 1.5. And these are contours of the resonance masses, right? And the colors are the scale of the local. So you see for the, for the five, it's all blue, which means it's suppressed. But uh, in the case of the 14, which now has two physical signs, you see this little red corner here where you are approaching the direction M1 equals M4 you can have some enhancement. Uh, also, if you change a bit the parameters, you can also have some enhancement on the third quadrant. And uh, you see there's a bit of red. So, of course, you can't be on this line, right? For one thing, you can't get the top mass. For another, you absolutely can't have the Ucal equal to three. But uh, around here, you can have some enhancement, which is interesting, right? Because the five cannot generate uh, such an enhancement. So if for some reason, you measure with some better precision the top Ucal, and there's an enhancement, this eliminates this, this uh, five model, and only the 14, only this corner of the 14 survives. Ah, and uh, here we have also, here it doesn't apply, but here we have uh, this green region, which is excluded by modifications to X blue blue. Okay, so we want to look at the TT bar HH process, which is complementary to Higgs Higgs to double Higgs production for measurement of the standard model couplings. And this is the prediction of the standard model around one Fentobarn. And uh, furthermore, I'm motivated because we are in close collaboration with Oho from CMS. And she's in the group which is measuring uh, this coupling in the standard model, right? And in fact, we sent them our benchmark points of the MCHM5 to see the reach for exclusion in high luminous LHC. And this, uh, this already came out, the CMS analysis. So, uh, below the resonances, you have a uh, non-resonant uh, process, which is, done, it is controlled by the three couplings, right? The top Yokawa, the triple Higgs, and the new HHTT interaction. And we would like to see which one is more important, well, as it turns out, a bit boring, but it is dominated by this guy, the top Yokawa, with some contribution from the triple Higgs coupling, around 15%. So this guy should be important at higher energies, of course. But unfortunately, at the point where this guy is important, uh, you are in the resonance region, at least for, uh, for our scans, and then you don't really see the effect of this guy because it's under peaks of resonance. Uh, and uh, just to see, right, this is some points of our scan for the 14, right? So this is at, at high luminosity LHC and FCC, the ratio of the composite Higgs model to the standard model. And uh, this is the 14, so sometimes you have an enhancement, sometimes you have a suppression. Of course, we pick it, you see the enhancement region is small, right? But we pick at points which are enhanced just to display them. And uh, you see it scales very well with the Yukawa to the fourth power, right? One here, one here, cross section, four powers of the Yukawa. So this is really the dominant effect. Okay, in the non resonant region. And then, of course, eventually uh, you get to the resonances, right? So this is uh, around a few TV, right? and then you get to see the peaks. And uh, typically you have, uh, for instance, a doublet of states, which is light, right? Or rather here, uh, these are the two doublets, right? Because these are the charged two thirds states, so this is from the first doublet, this is from the second doublet in the fourth doublet. So they tend to be quite close in mass, so it can be very hard to separate them. Okay. So we did the parameter space scan, and even with the simplifying assumptions, it's a large parameter space, and how do we dig through it to find interesting phenomenology? And so for this, we worked with um, 
clustering technique, bin by bin, which was uh, developed in this paper. And uh, Ricardo Mateus last week already gave uh, an extensive talk on this, so for the details, I refer you to his talk. But just to give a general idea, right, uh, what we do is we want to see how uh, a certain point in parameter space E, A is far or close to another point in parameter space B. And this is accomplished by calculating this log likelihood function, where N is the number of states, a number of uh, uh, counts in a certain beam for parameter space point A or B, right, which satisfies some condition in a distribution. And uh, you see that this thing, if you have the same, uh, the same number of events in the beams for A and B, this is zero, otherwise it's positive, right? So the bigger this is, the more distance A is from B, if they are the same, you have uh, zero. So this thing, uh, we calculate the, this big matrix, right, for all the points for inter space points in our scan, and you have a matrix of how close each point is to the other points. Once this, this is the most difficult part, right? Because you need to simulate this on my graph for hundreds of points. But once this is done, you can just compare and see which point is close and which point is far from the others, bin by bin, right? And you can include multiple distributions, like invariant masses, rapidity, PT, and so on. And uh, then what we do to cluster these parameter space points is we just take the guys which are have the smallest separation, SAB, and merge them into a cluster. And you keep doing this iteratively, right? Compare, merge, compare, merge, compare, merge. And this little by little reduces the hundreds of points into some clusters of points with similar phenomenological behavior. And at some point you have to stop, right? Because if you keep going, eventually you have just on the cluster which includes everybody, and this is completely useless. So it's a bit of an art. I don't know if there's a smart way to do it, but when you got to around uh, 10 clusters for the five, for instance, we decided to stop. And we had the 10 different uh, regions of parameter space with uh, s different characteristics, right? So I'm going to show you just a few. And in, par in particular, we saw a few things that we hadn't noticed before, right? So oh, here we have just three of these clusters. So this is for the five. And uh, the red points are those in the first quadrant of M1 to M4 space. And the blue points are in the second quadrant, right? So in short, the red points have the same sign for M1 and M4. And the blue points have opposite sign. So you can see that uh, the red points are typically wider. This is the, the HD distribution, the invariant mass of HD. This is an angular distribution of the top. This is the PT of the Higgs, the most energetic Higgs. And you see we found that this uh, resonance in this region where the M1 and M4 have the same sign are wider. And also you can see that uh, you can very often have uh, multiple peaks and these are clustered together. Here we have just one, resonance isolated, and here you have multiple peaks and this is a different, uh, qualitatively different kind of point, right? So these are just three clusters, we got about 10 different ones. Okay. And uh, we saw, for instance, right, the first quadrant points had wider resonance, and of course went back, and in hindsight it was kind of obvious, right? Because the top mass scales uh, in proportion to the difference between M1 and M4. If these guys have the same sign, you have a cancellation, and to get the right top mass, you need stronger mixing. If you have stronger mixing, these guys get wider, right? On the other hand, if M1 is negative, this doesn't cancel, and you can have weaker mixing to get the top mass. All right, uh, so these are the points that came from, so as I said, I said 10, actually 11 clusters. Uh, don't strain your eyes looking at this. <laughs> I'm going to highlight uh, a few features, okay? So first of all, the Topiokawa uh, ratio to the standard model, you see how it's suppressed because this is the five, and then the ratio to the standard model TTHH. Here, uh, this is resonance dominated, except for this third point, which has heavy resonance. And of course, since it's resonance dominated, this becomes more important at higher energies. Then uh, the widths. So you see, right, that the red points which have the same sign for M1 and M4 are really wider. You can see them here. And again, this correlates with uh, the fact that th for these guys, the mixings are stronger, right? So this leads to wider resonance because these guys decay 
via this mixing with standard model particles. Well, and then uh, the most interesting feature for us was that there's a significant amount of free body decay into WWT for some points. Which points? Well, as you can see, it's the points where the lightest guy, which is this line here, comes mostly from a four plate. So you can see uh, for the points where the four plate mass is the lightest guy, you, have, you can have significant uh, three body decays. So this deviates from what is usually assumed in searches for these guys, where you only have the two body decays, right? Uh, which are TH, WB, and TZ. Yeah? And this is for the not going to very high masses. If you go to higher masses, this can be even larger, like 30%, 40%. Okay, and for the 14, the same story, but now there are four quadrants, right? So the red and orange are the quadrants where you can have enhancement, and the blue guys are the quadrants where you cannot have an enhancement in the top of the column, right? So you can see here, for instance, this guy is orange and there is an enhancement. And uh, for the blue guys, there never is an enhancement in the top of the column. And then there's the enhancement from the resonant production of TTHH. Well, again, you can see some points with a certain amount of three body decay. And in this case, for the four plate, uh, it can be either a light, for the 14, sorry, it can be either a light four plate or also sometimes a light non it. For instance, for this point, point, for this first point, D1, you have a light non it. And this is uh, the guy that is leading to this big three body decay. So we found this quite interesting. And what we are doing now is seeing how the presence of this three body decay can affect the searches for these guys, right? Okay. So I'm actually going much faster than I thought. Okay. So the three body decays in the MCHN5. We are still working on this. Right? So this is. Uh, we are working with Carlos, who is a student here. And, uh, well, roughly, the life of our partner can be either a singlet or a fourplet. Sometimes it can be hard to separate, but I mean, roughly, if M1 is much less than M4, it's a singlet. And if M4 is much less than M1, it's a fourplet. And uh, the two body decays, as you know, obey roughly the Gaussian equivalence theorem. So for the singlet, you have the TH and TZ pressure ratios are similar, and they are about twice the WB pressure ratio, so this amount to 0.5. And for the four plus, it doesn't decay into WB, but uh, it decays roughly in the same proportion to TH and TZ. Okay, and uh, it's assuming in experimental searches that these three decays saturate the total width. But as we saw, we have three body decays, in particular WWT, and we are wondering how might this affect the search for this guy, right? Okay, so these are the diagrams that contribute to, the tr to this three body decay. So you have a standard model mediated by Higgs and Z and B, and then resonance mediated by X and by the bottom partner, X five thirds. So this guy is always negligible because this guy, the lightest top partner, never is in the same doublet as the B, as the bottom partner. So this coupling is wrong. So you can neglect this guy. And then uh, this is only important for the fourplet because this lightest resonance, when the lightest resonance is a fourplet, is really mostly the X two thirds. So X two thirds and X five thirds form a doublet. So this coupling is large, right? So this is important for the fourplet. Meanwhile, for the singlet, this guy is more important, right? In the case of the fourplet, the mixing between X two thirds and the bottom is very small. So only for the singlet, this guy is important. And uh, the Higgs and Z are comparable. So here you can see the singlet points and below the fourplet points. And uh, this is how many points in our scan have a certain amount of branching ratio in either WWT or the rest of all possible three body channels summit. So you see that the singlet points actually have almost no WWT and maybe there's some small 0 0.10, 0 0.15 branching ratio in other three body decay channels, but again, this is summing over all the other guys, so actually, channel by channel is quite small. The fourplet is different. For the fourplet, you can have a, a significant fraction of the points, as we saw, with 15 to 20% of branching ratio only in WWT, so this is interesting, right? Well, and uh, the domination of the diagrams, as I said, is 
shown here, right? So for the singlet points, uh, the WWT process is dominated mostly by uh, what is this for Higgs and bottom, right? And uh, a bit of Z mediated diagram, and most nothing by the X because it doesn't mix, and uh, nothing to the bottom partner. For the forepart, again, it doesn't couple to the bottom partner, and it also doesn't couple to the standard model bottom. Yeah. So in this case, the X, which is the origin, becomes important, and so the most important is the X, and then Higgs and Z, which are the diagrams I showed before. Okay, so this is the latest CMS search, actually, just came out. And this is the exclusion for pair production of charge to third resonance. And you see it reaches about 1.5 TeV now, yeah? So on the left, they are assuming a doublet light point, right? And on the right, a singlet light point. And this is the, the final state. And these, if you are interested, are the cuts that they are applying. So what we did, we simulated our model with the same cuts, but also including the three body decay to see how much this changes. So of course, we do not have access to the full data here. So what we did is just simulate our model for these choices of branching ratios and for a forklet like uh, state which has the possibility of a WWT decay, right? has this channel open. So what happened is this. Uh, in blue, you have the singlet like points in our simulation. In orange, the points which are doublet like. And finally, the points which are loaded through body decay in green. So actually it moved up, there are more events, right? We were hoping maybe it would be less excluded, but in fact, uh, because of the, the channels that they're looking at, they're looking at for leptons, right? You have either single lepton or two same sign leptons or multi multiple leptons. When you add the decay WWT, you're adding, of course, more leptons, right? So this actually improves the sensitivity of the search and you actually get more events after the cuts. Uh, and what we did, uh, since uh, uh, this is it's done at leading order, and then they rescale by a common factor to get the next leading order correction. So we, of course, are calculating everything at leading order, so we just take ratios. And this is, in blue is the ratio of the doublet to the singlet, and below is the ratio of the fourplet, which has a triple decay, to the doublet. So the doublet is about uh, twice as much enhanced as the singlet, and then the three-body decay is a bit more enhanced, which is what you see here, right? So we are hoping that these ratios are the same when you take the ratio for these points, right? And we check it, because it took those points from the graph, and we check that more or less this is satisfied, right? This ratio is around two, up to, say, 10, 15%. So we went ahead and did a very rough estimation, which is just take those points and multiply by this red uh, ratio, around 1.4, to get the would be exclusion for the case where the three body decay is open. And this is what we get, right? So the blue and uh, the red curves are without the three body decay. And this purple curve is with the three body decay, so there are more events. So the exclusion line actually moved to the right. So we get about 100 GV more exclusion in this very naive uh, recasting. So, but this is at least a mot motivates, can motivate them to include this channel in new analysis that they do, okay? The next analysis that are done, searching for these guys. Well, and uh, what we are, haven't done yet, uh, it's not finished, but we are already noticed one thing, I mean, even here, we are assuming that there is only one guy, which is the lightest, but as we saw, usually there are, there's more than one narrow resonance right on top of the other, especially for four plate points. And so the actual, distributions look quite different from just one narrow peak, right? So I wanted to show you this, which is uh, the, the distribution of pair production of the top part with um, one of the legs decaying in the two body decay and the other to some two body decay, right? So this is the distribution. Uh, this is the variant mass of T, W, and Z, or T, W, Higgs would be similar. And you see here a peak, which is when this guy, either the X or the top partner is on shell, but then there's a wide feature here, 
What is this wide feature? Actually, these two guys are near regenerating mass for a forbid, so they cannot be on shell together, but they are nearly both on shell together. So even though this guy is off shell, it's almost on shell, and this can be checked. If you look uh, at, say, the TZ distribution, which comes from these two guys, and you see that now there is a peak at the mass of the T here, which is intermediate state, either the T in the top diagram or the X in the bottom diagram. And uh, this goes on shell when uh, you have a peak, and here you have this feature, which is when the X goes on shell. So in short, when uh, on the left, right, when the first guy has an own shell to guard, they can have a large peak. But what you see, this feature on the right is actually the, this peak of the intermediate state, state is married over the distribution. And here it's the opposite, right? This peak is when the two body decay is on shell, and uh, the shoulder here is when the three body decaying guy is actually off shell. So it's not really a legitimate three body decay, it's more like a, a radiation followed by a two body decay on shell. Okay. So you can see that it can be very hard to separate. I mean, you could cut it around this narrow peak, but then you're losing a lot of events. So we are interested in actually doing the full analysis, including both the peak and the shoulder feature, which uh, we haven't uh, found it done yet in the literature. Okay, so this is, um, this is how it is for now. And uh, so in conclusion, these MCHM models still have a rich phenomenal knowledge that is not captured fully by the simplified models. Uh, we find that in the case of the 14, there can be enhancement to the top yield cow in some regional parameter space. And we look at the TTHH, which is complementary to the WX production for measuring standard model coupling deviations. And we found that this, this spectrum typically contains more than light resonance, which needs to be taken into account, and also three body decays, which can be important and can motivate further analysis. So, thank you. Questions for Leonardo? Oh, I mean, we scan it starting around 1 TeV for F, okay? So actually what is excluding by F directly is more the low energy couplings, right? So there's a bound of the top Yukawa on the gluon Higgs Higgs coupling. These guys, can, the triple Higgs coupling, these guys are direct functions of V over F. So this puts a bound that this uh, F must be around a TeV or higher, right? Yeah, and uh, for the resonance themselves, it's more direct search. So those, those bonds don't depend on the value of n, just No, no, it's, uh, this is direct, uh, this bound comes from this direct search. Right? So around 1.5 TeV from top yeah. for pre production, QCD production. But this production will depend on n? Sure. Ah, no, that, uh, yeah, ah, for the production. No, the production is, is, is yeah, it is. You do yeah, it it's this, right? So, this coupling is a modified, right? So, yeah. the XI effects really enter in the decays here. But if you're doing inclusive search, yeah. you're looking for every channel, so it doesn't depend too much on that. Yeah. It was electorate production, of course, this is a different story, but um, it's QCD. So, yeah, of course, for instance, if it was a neutral natural, it would be completely different. Which one is I supposed to be? YL. Yes. Ah, no, no, no. Um, I mean, I this it, take both times it can, it can. It's just that there are phases which you can absorb in the resonances, right? And also the standard model fields. And then there, there's just one sign left. And uh, we chose to put this sign on M1. Oh, but we could ah, okay. just as well have taken the message to be posted and put this sign on the curtains. Oh, no, I see, I see. Okay, now I get it. Yeah. Okay. 
So there's one physical sign for the 5 and two physical signs for the 14. Okay. Yeah. More questions? Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, it's a bit silly in this case, of course. Uh, it's, uh, we, are, we are stopping the algorithm by hand, right? So what we do, we start with all the points, and then you have a number of clusters, let's say, which is equal to the number of points. Then you join them uh, by similarity. So each iteration of the algorithm you're reducing, you are clustering, of course, the points in smaller and smaller clusters. If you keep going, you eventually have just one cluster, which includes everybody, which is also useless. So there should be some sweet spot. You have some uh, order 10 clusters, maybe, depending on the model, of course, which have distinctively different behavior, right? Qualitatively different. And uh, of course, what's qualitatively important is for our eyes, right? right? So uh, in this case, we uh, stop it with the algorithm, look at to see if it was already merging guys which are very different, like say, wide guys with narrow guys, or one peak with two peaks. Right, so we had to look and uh, decide when to stop. Maybe there's a smart way to do it. But no, but I mean, even in your 10 clusters, do all the clusters have roughly the same number of benchmarks, the same number of points? Or ah, okay. Is it very. No, no, not really, really, not really, because it, it uh, groups them by similarity. And there is no guarantee that this is uniformly distributed in the parameter space, right? There may be, for instance, in the case of the 14, there are many points which have a suppressed Yukawa and only a few points which have an enhanced Yukawa. However, the enhanced Yukawa is a new behavior. So these guys go in a cluster. They go in a cluster with fewer points in this case. Yeah, in practice, there were like two clusters which were very populous. Mm -hmm. They were concentrating all the very high mass resonances. Because they start to get wide and messy at the end of the distribution, right? And those ended up in two clusters that had a lot of points. And in the other lighter resonance region, then you have more discrimination power, you have more clusters with fewer points. But all of them had uh, 10, 20 points or more, right? and a few had uh, 50. That's the difference, not that. Okay. Okay, thanks. But the benchmark points are one per cluster. One per cluster. Yeah, ah, yeah, I didn't say it, but I mean, how do you take the benchmark points? You take the guy that is most, most similar to all the other members of his cluster. Right? The guy that minimizes the distance to everybody in his cluster. That's where you have less problems, in fact. If you look at the clusters, you see that the, the benchmark uh, curve is the black one. It's, yeah. it's basically, if I took another one, it would be very similar. Very similar. There's not much difference, right? So the black curve is chosen to represent the cluster. It's just the guy that is most similar to everybody else. But couldn't you use a similar criterion to also fix when you are stopping the clustering process? So let's say the maximum distance within the cluster has to be... Perhaps, closer. yeah, perhaps. This is, I mean, this is the first time we tried doing this, right? So maybe in the future we can, can certainly try to improve this, right? For instance, uh, I, I watched the Ricardo seminar and uh, it was suggested that maybe because there are three distributions that just included them linearly, right? So added all those beams, and all those beams, and all those beams. This may be not the smartest way to do this. You should do a multidimensional log likelihood. Yeah? And it might improve this. So next time we use this, we can, can do that. Yeah. That'd be nice. OK, so let's thank you now again. And tomorrow we'll be back. Yeah. yeah.